As you're able, please rise for the word of service for in the bulletin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Great is the steadfast love of the Lord toward us. And his faithfulness endures forever. Splendor and majesty are before him. From this time forth and even evermore. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And perform your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble, says the Lord. And I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. Holy and gracious God, I, I confess, confess that, that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, that the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed, but some is not known to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me, that my heart may know peace. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ. And in Him we are forgiven. As a called in servant of Christ, and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May He who begun this good work within you bring to completion the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. through the narrow door. Guide us by your word and spirit and lead us now and always into the feast of your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation, may be seated. The Old Testament is taken from the 66th chapter of Isaiah. For I know their works and their thoughts. And the time is coming to gather all nations and tongues. They shall all come and shall see my glory. And I will set a sign among them. And from them I will send survivors to the nations. To Tarshish, Pol, and Lud. Who draw the bow to Tubal and Javan, to the coastlands afar of off, that have not heard my fame or seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your brothers from all the nations as an offering to the Lord, on horses and in chariots and in litters and on mules and on dromedaries, to my holy mountain Jerusalem, says the Lord. Just as the Israelites bring their grain offering a clean vessel to the house of the Lord. And some of them also I will take for priests and for Levites, says the Lord. 
For as the new heavens and the new earth that I make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your offspring and your name remain. From new moon to new moon, and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh shall come to worship before me, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read Psalm 50 as reprinted in the bulletin. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes. He does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire. Around him a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth, that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. No. For not your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept the bull from your house, or goats from your folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills, and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world in its fullness are mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? I'll offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and perform your vows to the Most High, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will do it for you, and you shall glorify me. The epistle lesson is taken from the 12th chapter of Hebrews. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by Him. For the Lord disciplines the one He loves and chastises every son whom He receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom the father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of Spirits? <coughs> for they disciplined us for a short time, as it seemed best to them. But He disciplines us for our good, that we may share in His holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. But later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness, to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift up your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint but rather healed. Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God. That no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble. And by it many become defiled. That no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau. Who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that afterward. When he desired to inherit the blessing. He was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears. For you have not come to what may be touched, 
a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and a sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further messages be spoken to them. But they could not endure the order that was given. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all and to the spirits of righteousness made perfect. And to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkling of blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you not refuse him who is speaking. For if they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape if we reject him who warns from heaven. At that time the voice shook the earth. But now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth but also the heavens. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken. That is the things that have been made. In order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. As you're able, please rise from all free of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on his way through towns and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Lord, will those who are saved be few? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able to. When once the master of the house has risen to shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, open to us. Then he will answer you. I do not know where you come from. Then he will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me. All you workers of evil. In that place will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves cast out. And the people will come from east and west, from north and south, and recline at table the kingdom of God. And behold, some are last who will be first. And some are first who will be last. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Christ. We confess the Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated. At this time, there are young children for the children's sermon and now is the time.
says good morning in a bunch of different languages, right? It says, buenos dias, bangu, bonjour, bonjia, good morning, bonjourno, good morning, right? Now do all these things say exactly the same thing? Yeah, they do. They all mean the same thing, right? <coughs> they use different words to say the same thing. There's even some things right up here that, that I can't pronounce. There's some Arabic there and some Japanese and all sorts of stuff there. You know, I'm not sure what the squeaky sound is because the fan's turned off. So I'm not sure. Sort of a weird thing because it's weird. Anyway, we'll have to figure that out because it is sort of annoying, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yep. Hi right there. Hi. Okay. <laughs> anyway, okay, so today's God, Old Testament lesson talks about all the nations hearing about what God has done and, and glorifying what God has done. And so, who do you think the all nations are? What are some of the nations of the world? What are some countries? <laughs> yeah? South America, it's a continent, but yeah. What else? United States, right? Yeah. Mexico. Kansas. Can seem like a different country, but it's actually part of the United States. Nebraska's better, right? Anyway, yeah. Yeah, because we have all these nations, and the Bible says that, that all the nations of the world will indeed be um, hear the good news of, of God and will come and praise. Now, can we tell, can we speak all these different languages? Not really, but we can say the good morning one. You can say the good morning one, maybe. Well, well, we can read it. Can read it. Yeah, most of us only know one language, maybe two languages, you know. But we can, can read all this. But, you know, we can tell in English other people the good news of what God has done. Yes? Well, well that, that would be, be Japanese Nihongo. And actually, I, I took Japanese two semesters. But anyway. Which China? I don't see any Chinese characters here. It's, languages are interesting. I could talk to you lots and lots and lots about languages, but it's pretty cool. The point is, is that Jesus came for all nations. And that in the end, in heaven, all nations will be represented. And so there's like a thousand different languages now. And around God's throne of grace, we're going to be hearing lots of words of praise. It's going to be awesome. So, let us pray. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father we thank you. We thank you. For sending your son Jesus. For sending your son Jesus. For all nations. For all nations. Please help us. Please help us. Share the good news. Share the good news. Of Jesus. of Jesus. With all who will listen. With all who will listen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take a piece of candy, one for you and one to share.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text is 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being ready to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. Uh, this year we're going to be talking about uh, the field of apologetics uh, and what this is making a defense of the faith. We hear apologetics and we think apologize, like, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm a Christian, I'm sorry I screwed up, I'm sorry, whatever. And yet as the Bible talks about, and theologians talk about apologetics, it's about making this defense. Uh, St. Peter tells us to uh, always be ready to make a defense of anyone who asks you for the reason that, for the hope that is in you. Because people are asking questions. People are thinking big thoughts, and they're wondering about the role of God in their lives. People are searching and struggling, trying to make sense of this crazy, chaotic world. And in Christ, each of us are called to be ready to give an offense for the hope that is within us. We do have hope within us. In the waters of baptism, God has made us His sons and daughters. In the waters of baptism, God has connected us with the death and resurrection of His Son, Jesus Christ. In the waters of baptism, we were given a calling. A calling to be His sons and daughters. A calling to, to send forth, to speak forth what it is that the faith that He has given us. The difficulty, though, is that we live in a fallen, sinful world. And we don't always know the best way or the right way and even feeling comfortable to be able to um, um, share the good news of Jesus Christ. It's difficult. Uh, I know that there's some times where I'll be out and about doing the business of the day. I'll, I'll go to Mason's, I'll have a little conversation here, a little conversation there, a little conversation there. Sometimes it takes me half an hour to get a gallon of milk at Mason's, but that's okay. And, and, and I always wonder, well, well, should I have been more direct about sharing my faith uh, in my daily life? Should, should I have brought forth Jesus here? You know, in, in my entire conversations, I, I wonder sometimes, am I being Christian enough? Am I bringing forth the Word of God enough? Am I doing what it is that I need to be doing as a Christian, as a pastor, to share the good news of Jesus? Uh, and part of me, it's easy to rationalize, say, you know what, I'm, I'm connecting to people, I'm being in the community, I'm being in people's lives, and that's good. You know, there's that saying, people don't know how much you care until, uh, people don't care what you know until they know how much you care. And, and that building relationship is great, but there needs to come a point where I'm going to talk about Jesus. There needs to be a point where I'll go beyond saying, listening and saying, you know what, L let, me, let me tell you what the Bible says. Let me tell you what, what Jesus says. Um, we do have an enemy around us. That unholy trinity of the world, the flesh, and our sinful nature. Uh, we do live in a world where because of the Christ in us, uh, we're going to get opposition. Not only from out there, as people don't like the message of Christianity, but also between our own ears as that old sinful flesh is there. And we shouldn't be surprised that this is happening. Um, we should not be surprised when we do uh, our old sinful self tries to throw a monkey wrench in our gospel proclamation. Um, Jesus says this in John chapter 15. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you of the world, the world hates you. Such a cheerful message for his disciples. Um, that because the world hates Jesus, uh, the world hates, hates us. Yay! Uh, John chapter 16. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. 
but take heart, I have overcome the world. So we know that we're going to get opposition. We know that we're going to get opposition from uh, because of Christ within us. We know that it's not going to be a thing where we go along to get along in this sinful world. Uh, we know that we will occasionally ruffle feathers, just as Christ ruffled feathers as he walked. And yet, in the United States, we have a great deal of freedom. In other parts of the globe, Christians are being persecuted uh, for their faith. In other parts of the world, uh, people are being careful to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ uh, because of literal persecution. I, I saw on a, um, uh, the news yesterday uh, that in Hong Kong, uh, people are taking sawzalls to the, uh, the facial recognition tower. So in Hong Kong, uh, they've got these cameras all around and they can look at your face and the government can say, yep, I know exactly where that person has been um, in, in any... In the United States, we have this too in slice of plate readers where, oh, we're not using it for that. Well, they can use it for that eventually to track it if they wanted to. Uh, so they got the, the, the people in the, in the black outfits and the masks, got the saws all, and they're literally cutting down these light posts uh, that have the facial recognition software. Um, prior to seeing that, uh, as I prepared for the, the sermon, uh, the, the website persecution.org, Voice of the Martyrs, uh, has this. Um, um, this little story is, quote, this is a very situ serious situation we are working under today, the worker said. Most people have heard about the addition of millions of cameras with face recognition software. So on a day-to-day -day basis, we know that any of us can be tracked with every movement we make, every meeting we have. We have to be more cautious not to have anyone arrested or go to prison. In the old days, God made blind eyes see. Pray that he will make the seeing eyes of the cameras blind. And that much of our work is not seen by cameras. And then another thing uh, from China. Uh, one of my dear friends, a close friend, spent over 16 years in prison, the Christian worker said. The last prison sentence was, had, well, the last prison sentence he had was seven years. The man was not allowed to have a Bible in prison during the seven years. Even though he knew the risk and didn't have a Bible, he planted a church inside the prison. He wept on the day he was released from prison because he was sad to leave his congregation. We have an enemy that is trying to squelch the voice of Christians around the world. Satan is just as much as real in the United States as he is in China, as he is in Brazil, as he is uh, any place. And yet, because of God's grace, because of God's mercy, the word does not return void, but accomplishes the purpose by which it is sent. We know that... Um, that there is the last time he destroyed his death. We know that sin dwells within us. Uh, we know that the devil, our adversary, is prying around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But we know that Christ is victorious over this unholy trinity. We know that Christ is victorious over death in the grave. We know that our old sinful self is defeated in Christ. And we know that, that we have the faith that the world needs. Jesus says this in John chapter 16. Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come. When you will be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, where the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace, in this world of tribulation. But take heart. I have overcome the world. When we defend the faith. When we give others a reason for the hope that is in us. When we engage in the, the, the apologetic uh, means. Uh, we do so not with our end goal in mind. But with the goal that God has in mind. 
We share the faith not for our own glory, not to defend our own honor. We are not about racking up points and taking a prize uh, in some sort of intellectual debate. In fact, the prize is what Christ is collecting. The individuals who will come to faith in Him. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. He uses each and every one of us to seek and to save the lost. Evangelism is like one beggar showing another beggar where to go for food. And as we share the faith, paradoxically, our faith is strengthened. Uh, Martin Luther describes Christian growth in, in three stages. He says that there's oratio or prayer, and we pray to God that the word that, that the word does its work and that we submit humbly to God's word. Uh, there's meditatio, where we speak the word and we hear the word and we're in the word. And then there's this tentatio, this wrestling, this struggle. Uh, and just as a wrestler uh, doesn't become a great wrestler uh, by going through the drills, the wrestler actually has to be on the mat. So too in our Christian life, we need to be on the mat uh, as we share the faith. The Great Commission, Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Sharing the gospel can be risky. It can be scary. It can seem that we're a voice all by yourself alone. Take heart, you are not alone. Christ is in you, and with you, and among you, and for you. The brothers and sisters of the faith are also right here by your side. There's no such thing as lone wolf Christianity. As we share the faith, we can say with St. Paul, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. May God grant you the strength, the wisdom, the courage to speak out when the time is right. May you be able to share with your, your friend who's going through a tough time, yeah, life is pretty horrible right now. I know someone who had a horrible life. They put him to death. And he was raised again. Let me tell you about Jesus. And in doing so, may you be ambassadors of Christ. God make his appeal through you and through me. In Jesus' name, amen. We praise God with our tithes and offerings.
As you're able, please rise in prayer. With you, nothing is impossible. And the surprise of your sufficient grace calls us to offer you the prayer and petitions of our hearts, O Lord, to whom we pray. That the Lord call His elect from all nations and all peoples until the number is complete and the work of Christ is complete and gather us into His eternal presence around His throne of grace to behold His glory and to sing His praise forevermore. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear the prayers of your people. That we hear his call to labor in his vineyard, supplying missionaries and church workers to spread his word here and everywhere. And that we well supply them with the tools and resources to accomplish this work. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear the prayers of your people. That we be good citizens and good neighbors, and that those who lead us serve ably and well. For the benefit of all, but especially for the protection of the weak. For equal justice before the law, and for the promotion of virtue. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear the prayers of your people. That we extend God's care to those in any need, including those seeking employment, those struggling with disability, and the poor. And that we well supply those in need with abundant resources God has entrusted to our care. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear the prayers of your people. That we enjoy the gift of peace. An end to conflict and strife. Safety from violence. Protection against natural disaster. And an end to fear by trusting the Lord for all things. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear the prayers of your people. That the hurting find relief. The sick healing. The dying hope. The grieving comfort. And the mentally ill peace. Especially those who have requested our prayers. Including Dorothy. Zach. Grant. Sheila. Wardell. Paul. Becky, Milton, Emily, Arlen, Carol, Jane, Martin, Leonard, Bill, Sharon, Sully, and Loma, and all those we name before you in our hearts. that all those who cry to the Lord receive grace sufficient to their need. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear the prayers of your people. Through Him, with Him, and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of mercy, you promise that your word will not return empty but will accomplish your purpose. Secure our hearts in this confidence, so that we may be free from anxiety to rejoice in our own salvation, and to joyfully proclaim the good news of our Savior to all people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you a favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated.